Hi everyone, I'm Rena Ninen. Thank you for joining us. President Donald Trump is in Florida for the holiday weekend. After signing the Republican tax bill into law, the president once again praised Republican lawmakers Friday during the signing ceremony for passing what he called the greatest tax cut in American history. Although polls show the tax plan is unpopular, the president predicts Americans will warm up to it without much of a sales pitch. I don't think we're going to have to do much selling. I think the corporations that are giving billions and billions of dollars away to their workers, and many more are coming, I think that's really what's selling this, maybe better than anybody could, including myself. Uh, but I think come February, when they open their checks and they see, wow, what happened? I have a lot more money in here. I think that's really going to be something very special. President Trump just spent some time speaking to American troops overseas this holiday. He spoke to members of each military branch via teleconference from his Mar-a-Lago property in Florida, applauding them for their service and wishing them a Merry Christmas. The president is also getting some golfing in over the weekend, and later he'll be participating in a call with NORAD, the Air Force Command that tracks Santa on Christmas Eve. And over in the U.S., Defense Secretary James Mattis says the best way for America to avoid war is if its troops are, quote, ready to go. Speaking to soldiers on Friday, he said U.S. diplomats rely on the military's preparedness, which allows them to speak with authority in negotiations. Wan Jianghan with the details. Storm clouds are gathering over the Korean Peninsula, U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said on Friday. Mattis was speaking to soldiers and airmen at the 82nd Airborne Division's Hall of Heroes in North Carolina as part of his holiday tour of bases to greet troops. He didn't go so far as to predict armed conflict, but he said America will have the best chance of preventing one if its words are backed up by a strong military. A military that is ready to take action, he said, will give weight to the words of diplomats as they try to put an end to North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. Mattis's remarks came as the United Nations adopted tough new sanctions on North Korea, seeking to ban around 90% of the regime's imports of refined petroleum products. While the defense secretary has highlighted the importance of military preparedness, telling the troops to read the book, A Study in Unpreparedness, published in a decade after the Korean War ended in 1953, to get an idea of what went wrong the last time around. Reports have suggested recently that the U.S. was considering evacuating the families of military personnel in South Korea, but Mattis said it hasn't reached that point yet. Mattis' remarks came as South Korea prepares to host the Winter Olympics in February in Pyeongchang, just 80 kilometers from demilitarized zone. Although analysts have warned that North Korea could try to disrupt the games with provocations, Mattis said he thinks that's unlikely. Won Jong-un? Young news. And over in the U.S., Defense Secretary James Mattis says the best way for America to avoid war is if its troops are, quote, ready to go. Speaking to soldiers on Friday, he said U.S. diplomats rely on the military's preparedness, which allows them to speak with authority in negotiations. Won Jong-han with the details. Storm clouds are gathering over the Korean Peninsula, U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said on Friday. Mattis was speaking to soldiers and airmen at the 82nd Airborne Division's Hall of Heroes in North Carolina as part of his holiday tour of bases to greet troops. He didn't go so far as to predict armed conflict, but he said America will have the best chance of preventing one if its words are backed up by a strong military. A military that is ready to take action, he said, will give weight to the words of diplomats as they try to put an end to North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. Mattis' remarks came as the United Nations adopted tough new sanctions on North Korea, seeking to ban around 90% of the regime's imports of refined petroleum products. While the defense secretary has highlighted the importance of military preparedness, telling the troops to read the book, A Study in Unpreparedness, published in a decade after the Korean War ended in 1953, to get an idea of what went wrong the last time around. Reports have suggested recently that the U.S. was considering evacuating the families of military personnel in South Korea, but Mattis said it hasn't reached that point yet. Mattis' remarks came as South Korea prepares to host the Winter Olympics in February in Pyeongchang, just 80 kilometers from demilitarized zone. 
Although analysts have warned that North Korea could try to disrupt the games with provocations, Mattis said he thinks that's unlikely. Won Jong-un, Arirang News. Well, North Korea has described the latest series of UN-imposed sanctions as, quote, an act of war. That's according to the regime's state-run news agency reported on Sunday that their foreign ministry says the new sanctions are a complete economic blockade against the country. The UN Secretary Security Council imposed new sanctions on North Korea on Friday for its most recent intercontinental ballistic missile test. And these sanctions passed unanimously. They capped the number of patrol products delivered to North Korea and put a ban on the country's exports. How the foreign ministry responded in a statement saying, we will further consolidate our self-defense against we are apparent aimed at fundamentally eradicating the U.S. nuclear threats, blackmail, and hostile moves on establishing the practical balance